So now we already know that Coach Prime has been making a lot of noise with how Colorado has attacked the transfer portal. They have the number one ranked transfer portal class according to 247 Sports. They're number two behind Louisville according to On3. And these boys have over 50 damn transfers. Now they lost a lot of guys who ended up transferring out. So of course they had to hit that transfer portal and put some guys back into the program. But for the most part... I don't think that Deion Sanders in Colorado are going to be as bad as what many people think they will be. Vegas right now has Colorado with their over-under win total being three wins this year, which I think is really disrespectful. Because Deion Sanders is trying to come in and he's trying to win. He's not trying to rebuild. He's not trying to go through a three- to four-year roster overhaul. Like, you heard Deion Sanders when he gave that first speech to the team when he first arrived in Boulder. He's coming into this thing to win, and he's trying to win right away. And when you look at the Pac-12 last season, there were some really good teams, and there are some really good teams going into this year. We know about USC, Oregon, and Washington. Those three teams are probably going to be everybody's pick to win the Pac-12. We also can't forget about Utah, and maybe the Pac-12 can finally get a team into the college football playoffs. The last time the Pac-12 had a team get into the postseason was Washington a couple years back when they lost to Alabama in the semifinals. Now, although Colorado isn't going to be in that playoff conversation, I definitely think that they're more than capable of being able to make it to a bowl game. Like, people keep saying Colorado's only going to win two or three games. Like, even though winning two or three games wouldn't be bad because that's improvement from them winning only one game last year, You look at their schedule, and it's not easy, okay? Their first game of the season, they have to play TCU on the road. Then they have to play Matt Rule in Nebraska. I think that's a winnable game. They may not be able to beat TCU, but I definitely think they have a good shot of being able to beat Nebraska. Then they got to play Colorado State. So Colorado State should be a victory for Colorado. So at least you got one win there. Then you got to play Arizona State. They're going into their first season also with a new head coach in Kenny Dillingham, who was the OC for Oregon for the last couple of seasons or for last year at least. He went about the transfer portal the same way Dion has. It's just that he wasn't able to get the kind of talent that Coach Prime has been able to get out of the transfer portal. Then you have Stanford. So Colorado State, Arizona State, Stanford. Right there, I think you already have three wins. Okay, so now you just have to find a way to win three other games. And for those of you guys who really pay attention to the Pac-12, you guys would know that although there are some really talented teams in this conference, the Pac-12 has a tendency late in the season for teams to get really inconsistent. And last year, you had Oregon who lost to Oregon State, who barely even threw the football in that game. They just found a way to choke that game. You have a lot of teams in this conference that also don't really have any good defenses. I mean, the only two teams that had somewhat solid defenses in the Pac-12 last year were Washington State and Oregon State. And for Colorado, they're stacked at skill position. Wide receiver, cornerback, defensive back that's not going to be an issue for the buffs going into 2023 i mean that wide receiver you got jimmy horn jr xavier weaver you got willie Gaines, who follows Dion from jackson state the boulder then you got four-star freshman wide receiver and adam hopkins who is expected to be a big contributor to this offense on defense at cornerback, you got Kamani McLean, who was the number one ranked cornerback coming out of this past year's recruiting cycle. Travis Hunter, we already know about him, how Deion Sanders was able to flip him from FSU to Jackson State. And he performed pretty good at Jackson State, even though he had some injuries that kind of held him back a little bit. At safety, you had Trevor Woods, who was Colorado's best player on defense last year, at least their best player in the secondary The only question I really have about Colorado this year is going to be, how good are they going to be up front? That's really my main issue with this team. And although they did have a couple of big name offensive linemen that followed their new offensive coordinator who came from Kent State, he also brought a couple of pretty good offensive linemen with him, but you don't really know how it's going to gel. And anytime you just assemble a roster mainly through the transfer portal, you have to wonder 
if all those guys are going to pan out being good. Because although a lot of these guys have been highly ranked, they're four stars or they're three stars, I'm pretty sure there's a reason why most of these guys are in the transfer portal to begin with. So you don't really know how many of these players are actually going to work out. But I'm pretty confident that at least half of these players that Colorado acquired in the transfer portal are going to end up making pretty good contributions for Coach Prime in his first season. And I think that Deion Sanders is a way better coach than what a lot of people give him credit for. People make it seem like... Deion Sanders is a novice, and this guy is inexperienced. This dude dominated at Jackson State. Jackson State, according to 247 Sports Team Talent Composite Rankings, last season had a better roster than a handful of Power 5 programs. Hell, they had a better, more talented roster than Kansas State, who won the damn Pac-12, who won the damn Big 12 last season. So for Colorado, looking at their roster right now, with Shadur at quarterback, I think that not only do they have one of the better rosters in the Pac-12 conference, but they also have one of the better quarterbacks in this conference as well. We know about Michael Penix, Caleb Williams, and Bo Nix, and probably Cam Ward, but Shadur Sanders is definitely up there for being one of the better quarterbacks in this conference. And most of the times, when you have a good quarterback, you're going to be in situations to win more games than what you would be if you didn't have a good QB. When you have a good QB, he's going to be able to elevate the players around him, even if it's not the most ideal situation. Plus, for Shadur, people act like this dude wasn't dominating when he was at Jackson State. You got people on Twitter talking about some, well, that was playing at Jackson State. Like, he probably ain't going to be able to have the same success in the Pac-12. Like, bro. Who in the Pac-12 last year just had a lockdown pass defense? Nobody outside of two programs. Like, how many of you guys really paid attention to the Pac-12? Like, the Pac-12 had some of the worst defenses in all of college football. So I'm expecting Shadur and this Colorado offense to be able to make some magic happen year one on the Coach Prime. They also have a really good offensive coordinator. Now, their defense, we know the secondary should be pretty good because Deion Sanders is a Hall of Fame cornerback. He's one of the best defensive backs that ever played the game of football. So, if anything, the secondary should be a strength. You look at this Colorado team, man, like, I really don't see how they can only win three games. Well, JT, can they beat Oregon? Can they beat USC? Can they beat Utah? I mean, they have a chance. Now, I probably wouldn't be extremely confident that they could be able to beat USC, Oregon, or Utah, but they have a chance. You guys make it seem like all the teams in this conference are juggernauts, and they're not. This conference has been really inconsistent, especially when you get into the later part of the season. That's where a lot of the upsets start to take place in this conference. So for Deion Sanders and company... I'm pretty confident that they're going to be able to win at least three games. You're playing Colorado State. That should be a W. You're playing Arizona State and Stanford, which you should be able to win both of those two games. Now you just got to find three wins elsewhere, which you could beat Nebraska because, like you, Matt Rule is a new head coach. Well, he's not a completely new head coach, but he's coaching for a new program. After getting fired by the Carolina Panthers, he the Panthers, he goes to Nebraska. And he's trying to overhaul and rebuild Nebraska. But it seems like more people are a little bit higher on Nebraska than they are Colorado. And Nebraska's roster isn't even the greatest. Okay? So they could definitely beat Nebraska. You also could beat Washington State, Oregon State. I mean, Oregon State has a pretty good team, but they're not as dynamic as Colorado is when it comes to their skill position. You definitely have a chance of being able to beat Arizona. So there is a really good chance that Colorado not only wins six games, but they potentially could win seven, maybe eight. I don't get why so many people are more loyal on this program as compared to other teams that have first-year head coaches. I mean, there's no way they should lose to Colorado State, Stanford, and Arizona State. All three of those schools don't really have great rosters. Even though Arizona State has hit the transfer portal pretty heavy, I don't really think their team is as good as Colorado's. If Deion Sanders was able to bring the amount of talent that he did to Jackson State, 
There's no reason why he shouldn't be able to bring just as good as just as much talent to Colorado. I think you can make an argument and say that right now, Colorado has at least the fourth or fifth best roster in the Pac-12 at this moment. Now, they don't have a bunch of five and four stars such as USC, Washington, and Oregon do. But when it comes to evaluating them amongst the rest of the Pac-12 teams, I think that their roster is better than UCLA's, Oregon State's, Arizona State's, Arizona, Washington State, and maybe, arguably, just as good as Utah. The only thing that I think Utah has Colorado beat at is up front on the line of scrimmage on the offensive line and the defensive line. But outside of that, I think Colorado is probably the fourth or fifth most talented team in the Pac-12. I believe in Coach Prime, okay? Coach Prime, this is somebody who's been around a lot of great coaches. This is somebody who's won at the NFL. He's won at the college level. He knows what it takes to build a winning program. You may not agree with his ideology when it came to handling the transfer portal and kind of forcing a couple of guys out. But one thing about Coach Prime is that this dude is coming to win. He's not coming with the expectation of this being a rebuilding year. Like, if Colorado ends up not making it to a bowl game, I'm pretty sure you're going to hear Deion Sanders being really pissed off. He's not going to be coming up to the podium saying, man, this is a rebuilding year. You know, this takes time. Like, no, he's trying to win. And I believe that he's going to be able to win. You guys want to get mad because of how he goes about talking to players. Some people say he's a little bit too cocky, like he's too arrogant. Bruh, this is Deion Sanders. This is prime freaking time, dude. He's always been this way. Players want to play for Coach Prime. The guys who transferred out might not have liked what Deion Sanders said to him. But at the end of the day, for him to gain this amount of players via the transfer portal shows you that players want to play for Deion Sanders. I mean, he may not be an established coach like Jimbo Fisher or Nick Saban or Brian Kelly or Kirby Smart is, but the name Deion Sanders rings bells. On the recruiting trail, if Alabama's knocking on your door and Nick Saban's knocking at your door, you're saying, okay, this is Nick Saban. But when Coach Prime knocks on your door, you're also saying, hey, this is Deion freaking Sanders. Like if you're a recruit, Deion Sanders comes to your door, your mom or your dad probably looks out and be like, oh my God, it's Deion Sanders. Oh my goodness, I remember you. I remember watching you play. Yeah, like come on, man. Some of y'all making it seem like the name Deion Sanders doesn't ring no bells. Like just because he may not be as recognizable as a head coach, People know the name Coach Prime. People know the name Deion Sanders. Come on, man. Y'all making it seem like this dude is coming in and this dude hasn't proven anything as a head coach. He won at Jackson State. People were doubting him when he went to Jackson State. People thought that all Jackson State did by hiring Deion Sanders was bring more publicity. And Deion Sanders actually went at Jackson State and he dominated. So if he was able to dominate at Jackson State, I'm expecting him to be able to come in and at least be able to win six games at Colorado. This dude isn't an unproven head coach. This dude has head coaching experience. Although he may not have head coaching experience coaching at a bigger school, I mean, what all is so much different? I mean, other than the level of competition. And if you're down to Shadir Sanders, you better go watch the tape. It doesn't matter what level of football you play at. If you can throw 40 touchdowns and only six interceptions while completing 70% of your passes, you're a damn good QB. Some of you guys make it seem like Shadur is going to go to Colorado and just forget how to be a good QB. I believe in Coach Prime, man. There's no way I expect Colorado to win only three games. There's definitely a really legitimate chance that Colorado goes bowling year one under Coach Prime. And if I had to bet some money on it, which I've already had, I've already had putting some money down on the over with Colorado winning more than three games this year, 
I believe it's going to happen. Like, if you think that Deion Sanders is just going to come in here and suck it up his first year, I think you don't really understand Coach Prime. This dude's coming in here to win. They've had only one winning season in the last 18 years. Deion Sanders smells blood. He smells a fan base that's striving for some success. The games are going to be sold out. It's going to be loud. It's going to be really hard to win at Colorado. And some of their tougher games, like against Nebraska, USC, and Oregon State, are all at home. Now, they do have to go on the road against Oregon and TCU and Utah. But I don't think that Colorado is going into this season not having a chance at being able to go bowling. Like, this roster, I think, has enough talent for them to at least win six games this year. And some of you guys, I don't really think you guys are really just giving Deion Sanders a fair chance. I, I just think some of you guys are just biased against Deion Sanders. You just don't like the guy. You don't really like his mentality and how he approaches things. And you probably didn't like Deion Sanders as a player. You probably thought that he was too cocky. He was too loud. He was too Hollywood. So if you didn't like Deion Sanders as a player, you're probably not going to like him as a coach. This dude has that old school mentality. He was coached by some of the greatest coaches to ever be around the game of football. This dude has observed what it takes to be a good coach, what it takes to be a successful coach at the college level. This dude isn't a novice. This dude knows what he's doing. I trust Coach Prime. Anything less than six wins, in my opinion, will be a disappointment in my eyes. 